Welcome to the presentation on bat houses. Bats have been living in man-made structures for thousands of years, from large mansions of superheroes like Wayne Manor to temples for to worship the Mayan bat god Kamazots. Large houses made specifically for bats, like the middle picture of University of Florida's 400,000 bat house. Bottom middle is a typical one for farmers with a lot of agriculture holds 1,000 to 10,000 bats. To the bottom left, simple houses built by bat enthusiasts. To a bat looking for anything available like roof shingles, leaves and gutters, to a simple cinder block like the bottom picture. For the next hour we hope to cover the full range on bat houses and hope you will be on your way to get the bat house or houses for the bats in your area. Hello, my name is Pocket. I'll be your narrator through this presentation. This presentation is broken down into four parts. Part 1, Introduction to History. Part 2, Where to Get and Type of Bat House, Attracting Bats. Part 3, What Bats Like, Key Items, Temperature, Location, Color, Sun, Exposure. Part 4, What Species Will Occupy, Experimentation, Identification Tools, the 13 Bat House Species in the U.S. Known to Occupy, Additional Items to Add to Bat Houses. You're here because you're interested in finding bats a place to live. So we will be around to eat all those nasty bugs that keep bugging you like mosquitoes, wasps, scorpions, or thousands of moths and caterpillars eating your garden or crops. My species, pocket free-tailed, are only found in a very far south part of Texas and California. You wouldn't only find me in a bat house. So why me? I was picked, like any actor, because I'm handsome. It's not easy finding bats that can speak human. Bat Houses Part 1 of 4 is a fewer educational production created by Wild Bat Studios. Instructor Pocket, Executive Producer, Director, Voiceover Artist, Pocket, Audio Mixer, Graphic Artist, Model Engineer, Overdubber, Editor, Viotiker, Research Consultant, all positions performed by Radar, aka Bruce, not Wayne Taylor. Table of contents is here for your reference of what's included in this presentation. The movie is set up to be run on a web page like fewer.org. This allows you to use the directory to the left to stop the presentation or review this, any sections anytime you want. If you're watching only the movie portion like YouTube, this isn't available. This presentation is also available on PDF if you want to use it as a textbook. There are two sets of movies. One is a complete from beginning to end and the other is cut into 15 minute segments, which is better for instructors to keep class attention and to query questions to a class after different sections. Thanks to BCI's 10 year study with the Bat House, North America Bat House Research Project, a lot of very good information has been developed, has been summarized and simplified in this presentation to make the information as easy to understand as possible. There's a lot of information in this presentation, hopefully it will get you started and give you the information needed to further study of the many areas that are covered in this course. Bats in many ways are a mystery but hopefully this presentation will take some of the mystery on what is required for you to put up one or several bat houses and to keep them full year after year. Part 1, approximately 15 minutes, Introduction in History. Part 2, where to get and type of bat houses. How to get a bat house. North American Bat House Research Project statistics. Attracting bats, relocation, what bats like in their house. Temperatures, installation size, maintaining your bat house, criteria for building a successful bat house, environment for your bat house. Part 4. Bat house species in the U.S. and identifying yours. 
protection from predators, timing, importance for local experimentation, bat species identification, additional items. Bat groups, definitions, crevice dwellers and foresters. <clears throat> there are two groups of bats, the crevice dwellers that live in small to very large communal roosts with millions of bats. They live in mines, caves, bridges, roofs, shingles. The other groups are foresters who live isolated lives, generally only get together to mate, and live in shrubs under leaves behind tree bark. Both of these groups have communal mater maternity colonies to raise their pups. Most of the crevice dwellers and some of the foresters. These are the ones who will move into your larger typical bat house. The male bats of both groups live by themselves in small groups and could use a small house like a rocket box. That will be discussed later. Bat species. Now that you know the groups of bats, let's introduce you to the bat house bats. Worldwide, there are over 1,100 species of bats. One fourth of all species of animals are bats. We are only outnumbered by rodents. There are 45 species of bats in the U.S. Probably half of those will or could live in bat houses. Thirteen are known for sure, and we'll cover them quickly here. This slide shows six foragers and seven crevice dwellers. The following slides will cover each one so you can see where they're located and what they look like. For detailed information, see the profile for each bat in the other productions of fewer. The conservation map is from natureserve.org. Go to the websites for a key color code definition. Starting with bats that cover all of the U.S. Big brown bat. It's probably the most prolific, far-ranging Mex from Mexico to Canada bat probably the most common across the U.S. attics and bat houses. Little brown myotis. This bat was one of the most common, but new conservation maps being rewritten at this time. More than one million bats, mostly little browns, have died from the white-nose syndrome in 13 states up north, and numbers increasing every day and may very well go extinct if a solution of this disease isn't found quickly. Northern myotis was to as keen myotis and the western northern long-eared myotis in the east have been re reclassified as northern myotis. Many bats are now being reclassified as DNA tests and their true genetics are determined. Indiana myotis. Covering the east coast we have one of nine federally protected bats and is classified endangered. If you get some of these for your house you may want to contact your state conservation department or the U.S. Fish and Game. You may want to take a yearly pup count so they can track their progress. Was Eastern Pepperstrail now its tricolored bat. It's found north in Canada and south to Florida on the east coast. The evening bat. It's a bit of a mystery. It's a forester, so it should be a solitary bat, but will roost with big and little brown bats or roost with themselves. So you may have a few of these with other bats in your house. Mexican free tail. If you live in the south from west coast of California, Texas, east of Florida, you will most likely get these guys in your house. Bracken Cave in Texas has some 40 million bats and is the largest roost of bats in North America. Southeast Myotis is the southeast Arkansas to Florida. And there's bonnet bat or Florida mastiff is only located in Florida. The following slides will now cover the western bats. 
starting with the pallet bat. If you're looking at to get one of these, these, these guys eat scorpions, centipedes, and small snakes. Cave myotis. Long eared myotis. Yuma bats are also western bats. Early architecture of houses and bat habitats, China, Egypt, and Mayans. China. Thousands of years the Chinese have appreciated the benefits of bats. Chinese structure of pagoda was a natural design that was cap compatible for bats to hang with its curved roof and open attic areas, similar to some bat houses designed today. <clears throat> Thatch roofs and clay shingle roofs are a natural home for bats. The Chinese showed their appreciation for their natural pest controller by making them a blessing in their Wu Fu of five bats. Good health, long life, wealth, love of virtue, and a peaceful death. In Egypt, pharaohs learned thousands of years ago they were a natural pest control animal being on the Nile. Showed in their hieroglyphics. Egyptian adobe homes constructed ideal for bat caves. Wealthy Egyptians will have open terraces, clay or ceramic roofs that make ideal little caves for crevice dwelling bats. Egyptian villagers, adobe houses, have holes and upper hearts for circulation, ideal for bats to enter. That's roofs for them to, to live. Crevice doors will live under shingles, the foresters under leaves. One shingle could hold on to 50 bats. Mayans had adobe homes with thatch roofs. They also had their bat god, Komazot's death bat, associated with night, death and sacrifice, and was the god of the underworld. They also have a calendar that goes back 3,000 years. It's more accurate than the Gregorian calendar that ends December 12th, 2012. Just something to keep you awake at night. American and European homes. In the U.S. and European homes, bats have been living with us, but the average person probably would never know it, <clears throat> unless you're a roofer and had a few scare you as you repaired the roof. Shake shingles and clay ceramic roofs are ideal homes for bats and could hold thousands, as the exclusion picture below shows. So you want to go into real estate. Human houses have been going down in price where bat houses are in high demand. Just call your nearest pet store. There's a good chance they are sold out. More and more people are learning the value of bats as a natural pest control agent. There's farmers in Texas that can actually show you a graph like this one as they've reduced pest pesticides. They've increased their bat count. Some farmers have given away pesticides completely and relied completely on the bats. This does not make uh, for a good uh, partners with pest control companies, as they hate bats because they're eating their bugs. That this presentation will help you turn vacancies into no vacancies for your bat houses. You evaluate the environmental color of the house, location, the best chance to get bats to move in, and how to keep the bats moved in and maintain your house or houses. <coughs> Recommended reading. There are many publications on the internet about bat houses. These can get you started. The North American Bat House Research Project final report. It's going to be found on uh, BCI's website, batcong.org. Click Bat House, then research. Bat House Builder's Handbook was produced from the North American Bat House Research Project's final report into building better bat houses. At a price of $9, it's a good deal. It can be found on their website at batcon.org or batcatalog.com. Bat Conservation Management, Building a Better Bat House, and Penn State Homeowner's Guide cover bat house construction but they also cover more areas like bat exclusions as well.
This completes this portion of the presentation. Please continue to part two. It's approximately 15 minutes to learn where to get your bat house and the types that are available.